To answer the question of how good Jackie was at basketball, it's my strong opinion that that was his best sport. Mac Robinson used to say, my brother was lightning quick and maybe he would have developed a crossover and broke somebody's ankle. He was a leaper, he was a rebounder, he was a ball handler, he was a scorer inside, he could shoot from outside, and it was just an all-around game. If you read in the yearbooks, as a basketball player, they describe him as being very quick, fast, a good defensive player, and a scorer. And his nickname was Black Lightning. So this was, you know, decades before DC Comics came out with that character that's now, you know, on, on the screen. At Pasadena's Muir High School, Robinson starred in football, baseball, and track and field. But it was basketball where the young man really thrived, twice leading the squad in scoring and being named team captain his senior season. Two days after the basketball season ended, Jack Robinson turned 18 and immediately enrolled at a local college. And he decided, you know, let me just stick around and go to a junior college at, at Pasadena JC. And his first year, he set the school scoring record. He was also all-conference. And then his second year, he broke his own scoring record. As a sophomore, Robinson led PJC to a conference title, keyed by a victory over a rival Los Angeles Junior College, where the forward scored 26 of his team's 49 points. When the school year ended, Robinson transferred to UCLA, where he would continue to do it all. He led it in four sports at UCLA. He is still the leader in yards per carry from scrimmage in football. And he led it in football, track and field, baseball, and basketball. Yeah, he was Bo Jackson before Bo Jackson. My dad was not one to um, boast. My dad wasn't like that, but I did have a trophy room in our house. So I sort of understood his multiple sports by the types of trophies we had. So we had a basketball one, we had his football cleat, which was bronzed. Um, you know, so that's kind of how I learned about his other sports. And at UCLA, he uh, was the scoring leader in what was called the Pacific Coast Conference, which is now the Pac-12. You know, this was 1939-1940 season. Uh, there were a lot of really great players. Robinson led the Bruins football team in rushing, passing, and scoring as a senior in 1940. The same year, he won the NCAA championship in the long jump. Surprisingly, in his only baseball season in Westwood, Robinson batted below 100. Baseball was a grand old game, I and mean, basketball was whole home. But here's a guy that excels in a sport, makes the Hall of Fame in his worst sport. People don't know that, man. Jackie Robinson was the leading scorer of Pacific Coast League. He's All-American football player at UCLA. He was a world-class track man. Baseball was his worst sport. So after he left UCLA, um, he could have signed with a number of uh, teams, you know, obviously in basketball and as well as football, but because of the war, World War II, he went into the military. And after he got out of his military service, he played semi-pro football, and he also started playing Negro Leagues baseball. It was during his time in the Negro Leagues that Robinson was discovered by Brooklyn Dodgers general manager Branch Rickey, who was looking for a black player to break baseball's color barrier. In November 1945, the 26-year-old signed with the Dodgers, who assigned him to their minor league baseball team in Montreal, the Royals, for the 1946 season. He was everything Ricky had hoped for, batting 346. But before he would make history in the major leagues, Robinson played professional basketball. After that breakthrough summer season with the Royals, he came back home to Pasadena and joined this racially integrated basketball team called the Los Angeles Red Devils. And that's where he signed his first and last pro basketball contract. The Red Devils were one of the nation's top professional teams in an era before the creation of the NBA. The club led by Robinson defeated professional powerhouses, the New York Rens and Chicago Gears, which included future Hall of Famer George Mikan. Thing is, Jackie stopped playing on that team um, after a visit by Branch Rickey. And right after that visit out to the West Coast, he quit. And I think it's because Branch said, look, we got some plans for you. You know, I think it's better if you stop playing basketball because there's something bigger at stake here. And I think both of them agreed on that. Months later, on April 15th, 1947, Jackie Robinson became the first African-American to appear in a Major League Baseball game when he started at first base for the Brooklyn Dodgers. He knew the next step would be 
to break through the color barrier in Major League Baseball, and that was very important to him because baseball signified America. It was one of the true values in, in our national game. To my dad, that would have been really important to break that barrier first. He makes a Hall of Fame playing in an environment that's terribly hostile. Not only was he concerned about the guys on the other side of the field, but his own teammates didn't want to play with him. Jackie Robinson was a hero, and his fire and intensity on the field is something that I understood immediately. I understood what he was doing, and not really aware of the racial implications, just the fact that there was a guy who he was a, a first-rate athlete, and people were going to acknowledge him. Today, I think every American should say a special word of thanks to Jackie Robinson and prove that America is a better, stronger, richer country when we all work together and give everyone a chance. We considered him more a trailblazer than he considered himself a trailblazer. I think he would say, um, you know, I had this great opportunity to play baseball, to break the color barrier, to enter into a movement for overall change in America, breaking down segregation in general. Less than three years after Robinson integrated baseball, three African Americans broke the NBA's color barrier. Chuck Cooper was the first black player to be drafted. Nat Sweetwater Clifton was the first to sign a contract. And Earl Lloyd was the first to play in the NBA game. Make no mistake, I don't like my situation anywhere close to Jackie's. I was fortunate. In all the years I played pro basketball, I never ever had an outward problem with a player. And I'm sure there's some guys that probably, you know, might have hit me a little harder than they might, you know, because of my persuasion, but I never had a problem. You know, it's, uh, most of the problem I had was from the fans and, and restaurants and hotels and that kind of thing. I was a pallbearer at Jackie Robinson's funeral. And uh, I had enormous respect for him. And my attitude was, Jackie has gotten us from point A to point B. So I should start from point B, not go back to point A. Do you think that you will get some white kids to play basketball with Negro kids? I think so. I don't see why not. My kids uh, play with white kids, and nobody got hurt yet. And so and that's the way I conducted myself. Kids just want to know if, if we care about them. They, they have the dreams. They have the aspirations. Um, they have everything that they can, can actually get to whatever they want to get to in life. They just want to know that someone cared. I think my father would be a, a, a big LeBron James fan because he would be looking at how he is using his celebrity, his platform to make a difference. And he does. And he's not afraid to speak out. So I think that's the kind of player that my dad would respect and, and want to emulate. As a baseball player, Jackie Robinson changed the face of his game forever while forging a path for other leagues and fellow pioneers to follow. But have fortune not picked him to be a seminal figure in sport and civil rights history, Robinson might have merely been a basketball great. There's a strong chance that if his baseball career hadn't taken off, uh, many people were really expecting him to go into basketball. Jackie would have been a tremendous guard. He probably would have been a point guard. He would have mastered the skills of having a handle, and he probably would have been a great defensive player. This is from the Cleveland Call and Post, which is an African-American newspaper in, from 1946. Robinson, who was outstanding in four sports at UCLA, has this year made the transition from baseball to basketball without the slightest hitch, and with more than a dozen pro games under his belt, is destined to be one of the game's outstanding forwards.